and welcome to lesson number 19 in the Python tutorial series. My name is Steve, and today we're going to be developing a game of rock, paper, scissors. In fact, this lesson is going to be a little bit different than some of the lessons we've done in the past because there aren't any necessarily new skills that we'll be adding to our program. Rather, we're going to take the things that we've done in the past, creating user-defined functions, modular arithmetic, things like that, and applying them to a finished game. One of the future projects you'll have coming up will be an extension of Rock, Paper, Scissors. And by going through this lesson right here and seeing it all put together, you'll have a really strong base from which to make an attempt at the next project. Hopefully everyone watching this video is familiar with how to play Rock, Paper, Scissors, but if you're not, you can search the Wikipedia website and find all the information you want on Rock, Paper, Scissors. In fact, you'll probably find way more information than you ever wanted. I had no idea that there was actual Rock, Paper, Scissors tournaments that you could enter, and uh, there's also some different extensions of Rock, Paper, Scissors. But essentially, we're just going with the old uh, rock beats scissors, scissors beats paper, and paper beats rock version of this. Our program is going to allow a single user to select rocks, paper, or scissors, and then the computer will randomly select their choice, and a winner will be determined. So if you're uh, not really familiar with rock, paper, scissors, take a look at the Wikipedia website, and it will get you all caught up. Now, most of the time, if I were to give uh, one of my beginning students or beginning programmer the instruction, program a game of rock, paper, scissors with where we are now in this course, I'll get some fairly inefficient code. And it will look something like this. They'll usually have a user variable, and this will represent the user's choice. And we'll, we'll do this by using strings. Let's say the user chooses rock. Then the computer will end up making a selection. In this case, let's say they're going to choose scissors. And, you know, the computer could be generated by some kind of random number. Sometimes the program will have a random number generate a one, two, or three, and then that will be the equivalent of rock, paper, scissors. But we, we get something that looks like this and a series of if-else statements. If the user selects rock and the computer selects scissors, then we're going to print since rock crushes scissors, player one wins. And then we'll do another check for another condition. If the user has selected rock and the computer has selected paper, then we're going to print the computer wins. L if the user has selected rock and the computer has selected rock, then we print, it's a tie. While this is perfectly functional, you can see when I press F5 to, to run, this, run this program here, it is correctly identified player one as the winner when the com computer has chosen scissors. If the rock is covered by paper because the computer chooses paper, this program will correctly identify the computer as winning. So you've got a scenario here where the program does indeed work. The trouble with this particular piece of code is it's not scalable. It becomes infinitely more difficult to work with objects when there's more than th three to compare. If I were to make every possible comparison in a game of rock, paper, scissors, I've essentially got nine total selections that I can pick. If I start using 5, 7, 9, 11, the amount of relationships between those objects will grow exponentially where I could easily start having hundreds, if not thousands, of if checks. And that becomes really difficult to manage and really difficult to program. So there's got to be an easier way to program a game like rock, paper, scissors without writing hundreds of if statements to cover every possible scenario that could come up. And what we're going to do is create some simple arithmetic and a, a simple formula that'll help us do just that. Let's head on, head on over to uh, Microsoft Paint and pull up the graphic of rock, paper, scissors from Wikipedia, and I'll show you what I mean. 
So what I have on the screen here is the graphic that I just stole from Wikipedia's website that shows the relationship between rock, paper, and scissors. The only difference that I've made to it is I've assigned rock, paper, and scissors a number value as well. That's not something you would normally do if you were playing it not on a computer. Rock received a value of 1, paper received a value of 2, and scissors received a value of 3. What this is going to do in the future is allow me to quickly and randomly generate the computer's choice by simply selecting a random number, 1, 2, or 3. It's going to help ease that process a little bit. But there's also a very simple mathematical formula that we can use to determine a winner. Let me show you how that works. Let's get our text tool out so you can see this as we work through the problem. Let's say we're going to play a sample game. Player one is going to choose scissors. That has a numerical value of three. Player two, or the computer, is going to select paper, and that has a numerical value of two. Scissors cuts paper, so player one should be the winner in this scenario. In order to calculate a winner mathematically, I'm going to start by subtracting the computer's number from the player's number. So player number three minus computer number two equals a difference of one. Now, using the modulo command, I'm going to take that difference, mod the total number of choices that could have been made. There are three options here, so we're going to take that 1, mod 3, and get a remainder. 1 mod 3 is 1. Coincidentally, player 1 is the winner. Let's use another example here. Let's say player 1 chooses paper with a value of 2. The computer chooses rock. No, we don't want the computer choosing rock. That would not let them win. We want the computer to choose scissors with a value of 3. We take the, the player's number, 2, subtract the computer's number, 3. 2 minus 3 is a value of negative 1. Negative 1 mod 3 is going to return a value of 2 because the remainder of negative 1 divided by 3 is 2. The computer being player 2 is the winner. If we were to provide this example in a tie, player 1 chooses scissors with a value of 3. The computer chooses scissors with a value of 3. 3 minus 3 is a value of 0, and 0 mod 3 equals 0, and you have a tie. This mathematical formula will hold up for every possible combination that you could come up with in rock, paper, scissors. If the result of player 1 minus computer mod 3 is 1, player 1 is the winner. Player 1 minus the computer's number mod 3 with a remainder of 2, the computer is always the winner. And if the remainder is 0, you're always going to have a tie. And you can try that out with any number of examples. Knowing this, we can go back and make our program a lot more effective and a lot more efficient. Now that we're back here at our programming window, let's start writing this program for real. I'm going to erase this code here. The first thing that I want to do is I know I'm going to want the computer to select a random choice at some point. That means I'm going to have to start by importing the random module. Now the next thing I want to develop is the ability to take a number and convert it to a name. That's because when I print a message to the screen, let's say that the, the computer has selected 3 as a random number, which represents scissors, I don't want to print computer selects 3. That's not going to make a lot of sense to the user. I need a way to take that number and convert it to a name. And I'm going to do this through the use of a function. I'm going to define a function that's going to take a number and convert it to a name. So I'm going to call it number name. And in order to do this conversion, I'm going to need to know what number is going to be converted. I'm going to comment this and say, this function will take a number and convert it to its string value. 
if the number is equal to 1, we're going to return the string rock because we've set it up so that 1 equals rock. Else if the number equals 2, we're going to return paper. And if the number equals 3, we're going to return scissors. Let's go ahead and test this function out and see if it works. I'm going to run this program here. Let's run number name with 1, and hopefully we should get a value of rock, and we do. Number name 2 will give us paper, and number name 3 will give us scissors. This function is working properly, but I'm going to add a little catch-all to the end of it using an else statement. And if I don't get a 1, 2, or 3, I know something's wrong with my program. The program shouldn't ever return anything other than a 1, 2, or 3. So if it's not a 1, 2, or 3, I'm going to return the string invalid number program error. Now, hopefully, my user will never see that message. That's something that's built in there for me as a programmer so that I know that I've got a bug and I have a better idea of where to catch it at. So my number to name function is now working properly.